No, you should go into it. Okay, good. Huh. Oh, hey folks. Hey everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'll cover it. Uh, so, so uh, today we got something really cool that we're, we're trying to uh, turn into something. We'll see what um, happens. An evolution of Naeem. Uh, we're calling this segment Naeem's Shorts. No shorts though. Not today anyways. We're not visible. <laughs> In the, in the near future, we're going to have them in shorts when it's warm enough. <laughs> when we go to Bermuda. So anyways, this segment is called Nain Shorts. And in this mm. short, he's going to try to um, show ideas of how the Blade of Minds comes to its, some of its conclusions mm -hmm. and how we kind of figure out what's what. Yeah, there, there is a process to it. Right, it's so just... he's going to go ahead and explain that and I'll be right back when he needs to beat me up. So have fun. <laughs> So as you saw at the beginning, I had Rick in an arm bar. It was a very basic idea of an arm bar. Arms extended. Uh, you have essentially a lock on one arm, and then you're putting pressure on the opposite side of the elbow, or you're using the tricep. But the main point of how an arm bar works is that the arm is fully extended, and the person can't bend their elbow. Otherwise, they'd be able to muscle the way out of it. So you need to have something either on the elbow or on the tricep to keep pressure on it. Now, the very basic idea of it is that the mechanics of the arm, they bend this way. They can't go any further this way. And the elbow, even if you're just holding the wrist, will still be able to bend, which means you need at least two points of contact in order to make sure that that arm works in the leverage that you need it to so it doesn't bend and you maintain that pressure on the arm and you're able to do whatever it is you're gonna do later on with it. But, how do we get to that point? We've explored the mechanics and we talked about it briefly and when Rick comes and joins me again, we're gonna go over the actual mechanics themselves and show how it works on his end and my end, but also, and more importantly, how do we even get to this point when everything is moving around nobody's going to really give you an arm for you to do anything with, to break or to get into an arm. Bar. So what needs to happen and what are the ideas that we need to explore and understand in order to be able to get there? So if Rick, would you mind joining me now? Hey everyone. I'm back to He's get Rick. slapped around <laughs> by Naheem. Right. Well, let's first talk about the idea of an extended arm. If you extend his hand, there's not a lot of strength here on this end. Sure, it comes a strong punch, but the moment that this reaches here, as long as it doesn't hit you, there's no strength and you have all the leveraging whatsoever. If he were to maintain his fist right here in the middle of my nose, and I'll use two fingers. This was shown by a friend of ours, Nicholas Moreno, so shout out to him. With two fingers, and you keep your fist right at my nose. It's just not, it's not possible. There's no way. You don't have the strength. <laughs> I have a bad shoulder. We'll blame the shoulder. But even still, it doesn't take a lot to deviate that fist or the strength that's coming at you. Which is why when we learn things like the armbar, we always start off with a basic drill, which for some people it's hubat luba. Hubat luba, yeah. For us, we call it parry place strap in the name of the pieces that are involved. So if he throws a straight punch, parry, left hand, place, essentially like a block. But I drop this down and then I trap his elbow, which allows me then to punch. This allows the uh, drill to continue and then he can do it on his end, so on and so forth. And that the way that we do it in the Blade of Mind is that we explore each one of these pieces individually. We, <coughs> we work on the pair. How many different ways can we do this? You know, we can go down, we can scoop, we can push. The place itself, it could be here. I could step in and come in closer. Now I bridge the gap. And I can, again, go into and start using other parts of my body for striking. The trap itself. Oh, what if I just stop it here and then? Same as a parry. But the idea then has changed. It's no longer just getting this out of the way. Now I want to keep this thing from doing anything else, which is the idea of the trap. So now we're talking about ideas and concepts versus just specific drills or movements. What am I trying to do with this piece? And do I have to do it in that same order? I don't have to. Just like I showed here, there's my parry. But I also hit his hand at the same time. So now I'm using the parry as a strike, not just to get the hand out of the way. But it still does what a parry is meant to do, and that's get this away from me and open things up so I can do something else. 
how does that work in reference to what we're talking about with the armbar? Well, we just talked about how when the arm is fully extended, it's not very strong. You can do a lot with it. Here's my parry, here's my place. Oh, wait. Oh, I can turn it over and ungrab it. Oh, okay. But still, I can't do much up here. So something else has to happen in order for this to work. All right, once again. Now, parry play. Oh! Oh, look at that. I brought it down here. Oh, yeah, I secured this joint. Oh, there's the elbow. Oh, wait. Put it in your pocket. It's not fully turned yet. <laughs> Put it in your pocket, as Dennis Duarte says. Oh, wait. Oh, now I can roll on the tricep. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, can I do that better? Well, let's explore that again. Comes. Okay. Oh. This time, I step back. And now the weight of my body moving back is what dragged him here. Oh, and it gives me everything I need without having to try that much harder. Huh. <clears throat> so now we're exploring really how, from a stagnant position, can we get into an arm bar? Now, again, we said earlier that nobody's really going to give you that arm to begin with. So what does a fight look like? Two people square up, somebody throws a punch, 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 another one. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Yeah. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <laughs> because we explored all the individual elements that go into the actual <clears throat> movement itself, and more importantly, what makes that movement work. And, and I'm saying movement because this is, you can break it down to a stand up technique, but that's not how we teach in the Blade of Mind. We don't teach specific techniques for standing or the ground, but rather understanding the mechanics behind the opponent and yourself and how to utilize that in conjunction so you can get the better of that situation. In this, in this instance, he was punching at me. And I, at first I was like, oh crap, I'm just trying to not get hit. But eventually, as I got a better sense of his rhythm, I knew, oh, it's coming. At this point, I can grab it. Now, what happens if he doesn't extend his hands? What if he's not a puncher? What if he's a grappler? What if he wants to come in close and just hold me so he doesn't get hurt because he realizes maybe I know what I'm doing maybe. and he doesn't want to continue the fight. So now he puts his hands up and now we're fighting and he extends, but he's too fast, I can't. He's pulling back, he's pulling back. Oh, now I come in. Now, <clears throat> I'm close to him. Most people are very uncomfortable here. So his first idea is gonna be to get away. Oh, look, here's the arm. One more time. I know the arm has to be extended because that's where the leveraging is. If it's not, it's not <coughs> going to work. So how can I get him extended when he's this close? Well, he's naturally gonna to wanna to pull away. If he's not gonna grapple with me, then this is the first instinct people get. So I'm going to do as well. But look at the point of contact. It's the same as when we were doing our, our punching drill. It's at the wrist. It's the furthest point from the shoulder. Which means, if I can get it here, I can get that extension. If I put the pressure on it, now I can do a lot of damage. But I still use the very same principles of making sure the arm is fully extended, that you have a point of contact furthest away from the shoulder, that you add a secondary point of contact to make sure that the elbow cannot bend, because if he were to bend here, see, he can get right out of it. If I just hold on to him here and he still has that joint, he can get out of it. But if I grab here, now I can manipulate, now I can extend, now I can go to the head, to the shoulder, I can kick, I can do whatever it is I wanna do. But if I don't immobilize the mechanics of that arm, it's never gonna work, no matter what I try. If you're strong and you can do it, great. But honestly, he's not. <laughs> but he's my instructor. Well, because you're much stronger. And then the reason I say that very specific is because I am physically stronger than he is. I know that for a fact. But when he ever does anything to me, and maybe we'll demonstrate it in a little bit, <laughs> it hurts a hell of a lot more than I think I can hurt him just because his mechanics are so attuned to what he is trying to accomplish that it just feels like a freaking truck is pulling you or pulling your arm out. It's pretty crazy and it's kind of one of those things you have to experience. And anyone who has any teachers that are kind of a little heavy-handed know exactly what I'm talking <laughs> about. Yeah, they do. 
you get those hits, you get those pulls, you get those jerks, and you feel it, and you're like, oh my God, that really works. But it isn't their strength. It's the understanding of what needs to happen to this arm in order for that technique to work properly. It's their proper mechanics. The proper mechanics. And they're so attuned to their own that they can make them work anywhere, whether it's close, whether it's far, whether they're catching the hand, or they have to really dig it out. But because they understand the mechanics, they can manipulate them and change on the fly so they can adjust and do things. So this time, I'm going to attack him. <laughs> oh, you're going to make me work. Okay. I'm going to make him work, first of all. And second of all, I, he was kind enough to give me his hand for the demonstration right now and to point out all the things. I'm not going to be as nice. <laughs> Jerk. I want to illustrate a point. Okay. It's what I'm trying to get to. I don't mind suffering for my art. <laughs> Ready? Go, get on. Ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. <sighs> now, I Give me purposely a waited a couple of cycles oh. to, like he said, understand his timing, his rhythm, just his ideas of what he's trying to do. And then when I was ready for what I wanted to do, I did. <laughs> and did you see him strain at all in, in doing so? No. Was I giving him anything? No. I was trying to punch him. And I'd rather get hurt than hurt him because despite me having very little respect in the way I talk to him, <laughs> I do very much respect my instructor. So yes, I'd rather sir. it be me going hard on the ground than me doing it to him. He'd let me, but still, I wouldn't feel very good about it. But as you saw right there, the illustration that, one, he didn't go on the first go, and I was throwing punches. I thought he was going to go sooner, so I hesitated, and he was like, no, come on. I was like, all right. And before I knew it, I was extended far beyond what I needed to do. <clears throat> Which brings up another point, too, what we were just talking about. Is that what we were doing was right in front of it. But what I did to him, and the way I was striking him, he actually moved out of the way. I don't know if you noticed, he stepped in a little further. So when my hand extended, he was already on that side. He was already closer to my wrist, closer to my elbow, so he just had to catch it at that point and just had to wait for it. Again, he used the understanding that I have to reach for him in order to hit him. I have to come to him. My fists have to fly far enough to actually hit him, and that's where we are weakest, once our hand is fully extended, which is why you want to have fast hands. But as we said earlier, even if I have fast hand, if he were to do the same timing and come in as my hand is coming back, well, he can still get all the components he needs that would make that arm bar work. The wrist, the elbow, or the tricep, and the extension. Using the rest of his mechanics for his body, now his own weight, as he anchors my wrist to his body, will do the rest and actually fling me around if he were... Kind Not enough. bad, my young Padawan. Uh, <laughs> that was a very excellent uh, explanation and uh, exploration of what you were talking about. So I'm really impressed. Um, so let's leave you with this. Take a technique that you know how to do well and break it apart. What are the mechanical components of that technique that make it work? What needs to happen in order for that technique to be executed? And if you find the main components to that, where else can you use those ideas in your art to be more effective? And, and the other piece of that that um, we haven't mentioned, or that he hasn't mentioned is that, hmm. you know, we're, we're all given a technique, mm -hmm. but at what point would that really happen in, in an actual fight? Yeah, how do you get And where, where do you apply it? You know, mm -hmm. um, sure, we showed you the armbar very from the beginning, but how did we get there? At what point in the fight did that happen? And how do I then avoid it if that's the case? So look at all the aspects, you know, look at both sides of the fight and really understand 
what you need to do to either get away from it or to get into it. Right. Um, and so you have a clear understanding of what you're trying to do. Um, you never want to drive all the way to LA without knowing how to get there because you'll be <laughs> on the road forever. Um, look at and your people roadmap. still get lost with GPS. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Look at your roadmap. Understand what you, know, what you need to do and how you need to get there. Mm-hmm. And that's what this is all about. So very good um, first session of Naeem Shorts. Um, please uh, oh, yeah. like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And also comment on what he just showed you. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you think of this segment. Um, Questions. It is something that we are just toying with right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a lot of, a lot of good responses. We definitely would do some more of these. I would love to. Right? Because it's half hour already. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's a short. Well, thank you guys very much. This is Kali Conversation with Naeem Shorts. With Naeem. Me, Rick. Wait, what? Naeem, Naeem Shorts. Shorts. Yeah, this is Naeem Shorts, a Kali Conversation presentation. Okay, we can do that with me, Rick. And me, Naeem. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> see you guys. Ah! <laughs>